What is going on everyone? It's your boy 3MG. We are back with another video. Now I want to talk about Spider-Man for the PS4. We are literally no less than four or five months away from this game releasing. And I understand because PlayStation acquired the rights or exclusive rights for this game to release on its platform that more hype has been built. You know, kind of weird to me because at one point people were like, oh my God, a Spider-Man game is a trash. And then all of a sudden, because it became an exclusive for PS4, I see like much more hype and anticipation for this game. Plus, I guess to credit the developers, we have Insomniac Games who is actually working on this title first time ever them taking on this role so i'm pretty excited myself because i feel like we are now gonna have a better developing team work on this game and it ain't a movie per se based game it's gonna have other elements in this game its own core story but it's not gonna be solely based on the movie you may have some references you may come across certain things that relate to the movie but it's not a movie based game so i'm excited about that spider-man ps4 uh interview that was conducted with brian inhar and i actually want to talk about it as well because a lot of questions were answered even though some of the answers were kind of like cutting through and they weren't as direct as i would hope they would be about the game because and the reason why i want to talk about this is because through live streams and podcasts and just overall reading the chat a lot of people are actually putting this to be their game of the year and i'm not making this video to try to shatter anyone's dreams because i myself i'm a spider-man fan as well as you guys can see my damn avi or my my display art on youtube you see i'm wearing like the spider-man suit i'm actually a spider-man fan my favorite is spider-man 2 but of course i don't talk about it often because i kind of drew away from playing any spider-man game after that i played the Amazing Spider-Man on Xbox. I ain't digging it. But anyways, there was an interview conducted and from what I got was a few things and it, it kind of scaled me even more back because I have to recognize that once again, this is Insomniac Games' first you know, role taking on a Spider-Man game and there's certain things that may not make it to the game that I would have expected from Spider-Man 2 over. But I'm at least hoping that the experience is still there and still fun. And of course, I see the immersion. I see how um, anticipating this game is looking and how good it looks from the gameplay that they're really putting this through. So I understand that this is more of a passion project they're really putting in a lot of work to make sure and ensure that we have a great superhero game one thing that they did mention and that that was answered in there was about the fall damage and i and from the gameplay i've watched i've never really seen spider-man jump off buildings or fall off from a specific height and actually received any kind of damage or any kind of consequence and what was answered in that video and shout out to amazing lucas again he actually reiterated what was going on i will put his link in the description below was that there's really no fall damage in fact there's ways to kind of bypass the fall damage. Like for example, the way they made it in the game is Spider-Man will fall, but would bounce back up from the, from the floor up to the air and you could continue the momentum or the motion of you web swinging, right? And also they have upgrades in regards to that situation. So for example, you may be able to hit the floor and then web swing or hit the floor, bounce over and roll over. So they have different upgrades for that matter as well. At least they didn't make it as cheesy to where you will hit the floor and bounce. They actually added upgrades, they added different ways for you to like maybe negate or bypass hitting the floor. But to be quite honest, I want there to be fall damage. I want it to be where you mess up on a web swing and you hit the walls or something. I want consequence, because I want people to be able to master the web swinging mechanic. I want it to be where the physics are so on par that you have some sort of consequence. I want to see it to where you're going through a mission, whichever difficulty, if they even have a difficulty setting, that if you miss a web swing or you get hit by or something, a platform, that you see damage from that. Like, I don't want it to be where they're really catering to the casual player and like anytime at any point, you could just hit the floors and just keep running and jumping. No, of course not. Spider-Man is not Superman, and I understand that Spider-Man could take damage, but at the same point, at the same time, this is a video game, and I would like to see some sort of consequence between uh, between these type of actions. Also, there was some questions answered about the web swinging, because if you remember from Spider-Man 2 and beyond, you have like web swinging where people would have this momentum of spinning around in circles. Well, they kind of answered that, and I understand they put more fluidity and physics between the web swinging, and therefore, you will not have that type of feature. Now, I understand the scale of games back then was much broader, but on smaller engines and smaller taxes on hardware in this case i believe they didn't really add certain physics like that to the game because that would add more to the game's dynamic and more physics and stuff like that which would toggle the experience which would probably in that play in that in turn delay a game or so because they would have to really work hard and make sure that the frames or anything of that sort would match off the actual game's core mechanic some more questions were asked and they answered about the web swinging mechanic uh, if you would build this momentum and be able to loop around in circles as you were able to do in the previous spider-man games like spider-man 2 and they pretty much said no you're not going to be able to have that and i understand they don't want to overstress the capabilities of the web web swinging but they want to also make sure that the web swing is as fluid as possible i do hope they have some free form web swinging some cool ways to actually go about you know uh going to different locations or whatnot but if they just make it as stiff and as simple i mean i don't know how i'm gonna feel about that 
uh once again i haven't seen too much gameplay or someone having the game for themselves showing off some of the abilities that you have while web swinging any cool little side things you can do but as far as i'm concerned you are not able to have that momentum where you can just spin around in circles over and over again and Hart also mentioned that this is a story driven game so they wanted to make sure that the experience was there for the player that we focus on the story at hand there's a lot of action that's going to go on in this game whatever fluidity is happening with the web swinging his abilities um combat style or melee they're putting all the focus around spider man himself to make sure that it follows up with the actual story that they have built in this game so i'm fine with that now to follow up with everything i just mentioned there was something i heard in the video that i was hoping i did not hear i was like wait let me go back real quick and i was hoping it would not turn into an option in the game and that's of course the day and night cycle that was something i really wanted to know because everything we've watched was never during like the, the evening to night cycle. It was always broad daylight, whether if it was like a small change of gameplay an exchange of something else or a transition over to the story, everything has been shown to us during the day. And I was really questioning whether or not they have a day and night cycle. And of course it's important to me because there's certain missions that I went through in like Spider-Man 2 that were at night. And I was hoping, are they gonna add something like that or something similar in this particular game and no. There will be no night cycle, no day and night cycle. And that kind of breaks me a bit because I'm like, damn, we're going to kind of miss some of like the experience at night. Now, I don't, I forgot the answer as to why Brian Edenhart mentioned that there's no day and night cycle, but I believe it'll probably be taxing um, on hardware. There'll probably be more work that needs to be done as developing this game, also scaling it into a night style. So I don't know, maybe the time frame with, with this game being developed, there wouldn't be enough time and they would have probably had to push the game back some more. I'm not sure but understand that i was really hoping to see a day and night cycle now i've read somewhere on multiple websites that you'll be able to change the time in the in the game through the options ability and also after you beat it so i don't understand like that whole concept i have to read somewhere else that if it's after you beat the game because if it's after you beat the game i don't think i'm gonna go back to this game unless they add content but if they do add content will they lock it again like it wasn't very clear and if it is in the options menu it's a bit upsetting because it kind of breaks a little bit of the dynamic of progressing in story i would hope that in certain cases you know you can't really proceed with doing missions at night but you could do some of the side missions or there's probably encounters at night i was really hoping for that now it kind of throws me off because now it ensures that we won't see certain characters make it to this game. We will, it kind of ensures that we won't get this kind of placement where we get to travel at night freely and try to like get to certain things and side missions of some sort. Now I feel like everything is gonna go through the day and the story is just a progression to where it doesn't even matter if you do anything side mission related. So that's just what I got from it. I don't understand the whole situation as to that, but that kind of like threw me off a bit. Understand, I think that would have probably been a cool feature just to have. That's all I really have for Spider-Man PS4. I know a lot of people were anticipating this to be like their game of the year. Um, once again, I had such high expectations, but I also got to scale it back. This is Insomniac's first title or first time making a Spider-Man game. So we got to also, you know, recognize that and give them some respects for that because the game is looking gorgeous. It's looking really good. It's looking polished. And I'm just hoping that we can get our hands on this game a little bit early so I can give you guys a full flesh review on this game. You guys really enjoyed my God of War review and I appreciate that. But comment below, what's your thoughts on this? Are you still expecting a great game for Spider-Man? Also, I'm gonna link the Amazing Lucas's video below because he had a great short video. Video explaining all this but it's your boy 3g god bless everybody and i'm out peace